So those of you who are James Bond fans may recognize this location. Um, it's actually the location where James Bond um, had a gunfight with his nemesis in the final scenes of Skyfall. James was inside his Scottish mansion and his nemesis was in a helicopter gunship circling the Scottish mansion. Well, I and my smartphone know that I'm nowhere near Scotland. I'm in fact several hundreds of miles south. Um, but sadly, my Z8 is oblivious to that uh, fact. So GPS is one of the material emissions on the Z8. Um, it's not essential, but it is quite useful. I find going back to the location of images in my smartphone quite useful if I'm searching for an image or perhaps if I'm researching um, a future trip um, and looking for inspiration or where I've shot before. So having that EXIF information is quite useful. So if we think about why Nikon omitted it from the Z8 when it's in the Z9, it could be because of space considerations. The Z9 has a much bigger body. Um, you need space for the, um, the circuitry and also an antenna. It could be about power usage. You know, GPSs do drain power because they're pretty much always on. And therefore, maybe with the smaller ENEL um, 15C battery, it's, um, that was a consideration. It could be a cost consideration, or it could just be to differentiate between the two cameras. In all likelihood, it's probably a mix of all of those things. With my Z6 and my Z7, I tried the alternative approach, which is that you can connect through Bluetooth to SnapBridge and your mobile phone will then pass the location data from its GPS to um, the camera and embed it in the EXIF data. However, what I found was it was actually quite battery draining, both on my cameras and also on my smartphone, more importantly. So I stopped using SnapBridge. Luckily, on the Z8, we've got the return of the 10-pin connector, which I haven't had since my D800 and my D850. On my D800 and my D850, I used that 10-pin connector for shutter release. And I also had a small GPS unit that I could connect to the camera because neither of them had GPS. So like many photographers, I have a, an archive of all of these different uh, components. I rarely throw these cables and, um, and things away. So I went looking for that GPS unit and luckily I found it and it's an Aokatech AK G1 unit and I've attached it to my Z8 just to see whether it would work. And as luck would have it, it seems to work. Now, as with many third party accessories, there are some pros and there are some cons. The things I like about it are that it plugs into the 10 pin connector. There's no cables, um, which is great. And it runs off of the um, camera battery. So it's pretty integral to the camera. It feeds the location data straight into the EXIF data, which then gets exported with your images. The downsides are that it runs off the camera battery. So there is a potential power drain on that. But the one thing I liked about the Aokatech GPS was that it had an on off switch. So I can turn it off um, when I'm not using the camera. So it's not draining the battery when I'm not using it. Equally, it's a little bit slow to start up. It takes probably about two minutes to lock onto the satellites when you first turn it on. So you have to sit with, you know, with a, a wide open um, view for the unit to have to the satellites. Um, but once it's locked on, it's quite quick to catch the satellites when you turn the camera on again. And there is a little LED on the device, which is red when it's not um, captured the satellites and goes green when it has so it's easy to see. It is important to remember that the Aokatech is 10 year old technology. It just uses GPS satellites. It doesn't have the GNSS um, capability that the Z9, the much more modern technology that uses other satellite um, constellations such as Galileo and GLONASS. Equally, because it's not built into the camera, it does sit on the front here. It's not a big um, box, but it does catch sometimes when I'm putting it into my bag. All of these are minor things compared to the capability of being able to capture that location data without using your smartphone and without using SnapBridge and feed it straight into the EXIF data.
So whilst the AOCTEC um, GPS is no longer available, and actually it's, you know, it's quite old technology, there are alternatives that you can find on the likes of um, Amazon and through various camera shops, and they're from Solmeta and Micnova. Um, the slight downside of those is I think they sit on the hot shoe with a cable that connects to the 10-pin connector, but they may have better technology and they retail around about the £100, $100 mark. It'd be great to hear whether location data is something that's important to you and how are you approaching it? Are you using SnapBridge or have you bought one of these third-party GPS receivers? Um, it'd be great to hear your thoughts, drop them in the comments below, and as always, it'd be great to see you on a future video. So over and out from Hankey Common.